Hey everyone, today we've got this 1978 Gibson Les Paul Custom and it's here for a refret. It'll be fun. So hey everyone, welcome into today's video. Thank you for joining us. As always, I am Ryan Mazzocco of Mazzocco Guitars, and I'm filming today here from the repair studio in Palin Music Center in Joplin, Missouri, 1202 South Range Line. Come down and see us. Um, today, I have a 1978 uh, Gibson Les Paul Custom. And um, it's a real nice guitar. It's heavy, but uh, it's got all the cool features on it. First of all, you probably notice right off the bat, the triple humbuckers. Um, and then uh, just all of the appointments. It has the big block inlays. It has the binding and purfling all the way around. You can see the black and white stripes um, on the top and on the back. Big solid mahogany body with, uh, with a real nice maple neck and top. And the uh, pearl inlays on the headstock, uh, the Gibson logo, and everything. So this this guy gets played a lot, and so the owner is ready for some new frets, and so that's what we're going to do. Now it seems the trend on these videos is nothing is ever just that easy. This is a Gibson, and the way that they made these at times and then again at other times is they made these in a way that uh, you can see it has these little what we call nibs on the end. Uh, so just as a point of comparison, see here a different guitar that has binding on it. You see the binding comes up to the bottom of the fret, whereas on this one, the binding comes up over the edge of the fret. And the reason that is, is because of the manufacturing process and the order in which they do things. They make the fretboard, they put the frets on it, and then they slap the binding on the sides. And then they come back and carve away everything that is not fretboard or fret. And so what you end up having are those little humps of binding around each one of the frets. And they call those nibs. Because this is a product of the original manufacturing process. This is something that makes it really difficult when it comes time to refret them. Um, some guys are absolute purists and they want these nibs left on there so that it all is original. And some guys are like, I need new frets, so just do whatever you got to do. So is it possible to replace these frets while leaving these little nibs intact? Yes it is possible. It also requires some really, really precise fret work um, that requires a lot of skill and a lot of time. And so it's something that say for a normal refret job uh, is going to cost one thing, but then to, to try to do that same refret job, but preserving these nibs, the cost just is going to climb. Anywhere you go, it's going to cost a lot more. So a lot of guys will say, let's just lose the nibs, get new frets and get this thing playing. And that is the option that our customer has chosen to go with here. Uh, personally, I think it's a great option. To me, the playability and the function of the guitar is more important than some of those other things that some people may be worried about, especially on an instrument like this. Because like I said, this is a 78. This isn't um, going back into the early 60s or in the 50s <clears throat> where keeping everything all original is going to have that much value and and doing work like this is going to devalue the instrument that much this is about worth oh maybe about the same as you would get a brand new one for so we're not worried about that we're just going to put new frets on it and while there is a lot of time and patience and skill that's involved in this job to describe it is really not that hard it's pretty straightforward pretty much we uh remove the strings first and then remove each one of the frets. We're going to level and clean up the fretboard, including getting rid of each one of these little nibs. And then we are going to put on this brand new jumbo size fret wire. And it's a real good size because it's going to 
be very comparable to what was there before and hopefully cover up the edges just a little bit in case there were any marks left from the original frets. Uh, it's going to clean it up and look, it's going to look real nice. So if you've never seen a fret before, not on the guitar, this is how they work. Even still to this day, um, they have these tiny little barbs that, uh, that attach into the inside wall of the slot here. And these are usually glued in in some way. Um, not always, but typically you can expect them to be glued in. Uh, and I'm going to be gluing mine in when I put them in here too. So just uh, you don't actually glue the frets in because you're not gluing the metal to the wood. That's not how it works. Really what you're doing is you are when you put the glue in and then it sets up then that uh, that causes the inside walls of the slot to become more rigid. Uh, and that helps to hold in those barbs that are poking into the wood on each side. And the glue is also the same reason for the soldering iron here, is because um, whatever glue is used under there, the heat from the soldering iron is going to help to soften that glue. And then also you saw that I uh, put some water on here, and that, that does a couple of things. One is if it is a water-soluble glue that's used in there, then the heat and the water together um, can just do that much more good in softening the glue. Um, but if not, even still, it does serve a purpose because it helps to soften the fibers of the wood right here along the edge of this. Uh, those barbs, they're biting down into the walls on the inside of the slot. And so if you were to take and just rip them out, uh, then you could definitely do some damage and tear the wood out uh, on each side of it. And you can tear it in little fibers or you can tear it out in big chunks. And that's, that's just not really a thing that you want to do if you can avoid it. So what I do, I get in here and I start at one end and I just work my way down with sort of a back and forth wiggling motion and that helps to bring it straight up nice and even and it also helps to prevent uh, any tearing out of the fretboard. And these are definitely glued in. I can, I can hear the sound of glue crackling and popping as it releases. I'm not exactly sure what kind of glue it is. I do smell a little bit of a, a hide glue smell. So it might be just a little bit of hide glue, a little hot hide glue inside there.
All right, so now all of the frets are out and the, uh, the use of heat, water, and patience really seemed to pay off because we got all of the frets out and there was, there was no incidence of uh, significant tearing anywhere, nothing that we're gonna have to go back and patch in or touch up. Uh, looks really great. So uh, now it's time to clean this off and get ready for new frets. Okay, so now I've got the frets all out. Uh, I have the uh, upper portion of the body and the pickups masked off, as well as the first part of the headstock here, just to try to avoid any sort of damage to the finish or the body, um, and also to try to avoid getting uh, any shavings or filings down in the pickups. That wouldn't be good. So now that we've got the frets off, maybe we can see a little more clearly exactly what we're dealing with here. All right, so there's, there's no fret here, but we've still got these little nibs at the end uh, of each one where the fret would be. So what we need to do is we need to level all of these off so that that's smooth along there. And I'm just gonna use my sanding beam. And what, at the same time of getting those nibs off, I'm also going to work my way onto the fretboard and clean it up real nice as well. Now the first thing I did when I started this was um, adjust the truss rod to make the uh, fretboard nice and straight. Okay, so now <clears throat> here I have all of my frets that I have already pre-cut and radiused uh, to fit each individual fret. So this particular guitar, I did check. Um, so being a Gibson, usually I checked for a 12 inch radius, but that was not quite tight enough. So it looks like we are actually closer to about a 10 so I radiused these a little bit tighter. Now let's talk about actually installing them on this fretboard. So here's an example of, this is another Gibson. So here's an example, this is another Gibson. This is a J50 that I've got in here right now. So this is pretty much a standard fretboard that you're gonna find on plenty of guitars. Um, at, at all ends of the value spectrum. So you're going to have just a fretboard and then the frets are laid into the fretboard, into the slots, and you can see that there's no binding on here. So the fret and the fret tang come all the way out to the edge of the fretboard. And then they're cut and filed off and made nice and smooth and, and everything's great. But here's what we have in this situation of when you have binding on the fretboard. So let's say we were to take this, we have the fret tang. It's a little blurry. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Will that focus at all? Yeah. All right. So you've got the cross section of there. It looks like a T with a rounded top. So the fret tang down here it goes all the way to the end, end to end. So if I were to take this and just press this down in here like it is, that binding is going to be in the way. It's not going to go down. So what we have to do is we have to notch out the fret tang. Fortunately, lots of luthier supply places make these handy little tools, these fret tang nippers. 
and it makes the job so much easier. Uh, pretty much what you do is you just put your fret in here just like that, right where it fits. See if I can get the light on there so you can see that better. But yeah, I mean, see, it's just a, it's a slanted blade, just like a guillotine, and it just comes down and, and nips it off. I'll show you exactly how it works. So it has a little notch right here for you to put the fret into just like this. All right, get it nice and set and and now we have the fret tang notched out. So that would go right there and fit but we still have the other side to deal with. So just do the same thing over here. All right, and it cuts it off real nice and clean too. These are good, these are good tools. Okay, so now this is where it takes a little bit of precision because what you want to do is you want to have it so that it's notched just inside the binding just a little bit because you notice too that with the radius that's on here, well, I figured our fretboard to be at about a 10 inch radius. So if you compare our fret wire to the 10 inch, well, that's a little tighter, isn't it? It doesn't fit. It looks it's like it's closer to maybe somewhere between a nine and a seven and a half. So we do that on purpose. What you want to do is you want to have your fret radius tighter than your fret board radius when you're installing it. So if you can imagine what this does, you know, we talked about the little barbs here that the grab onto the walls of the, uh, the size of the, the, frets, the fret slots. So if we put it in so that it is the exact same radius, then we have to hope that everything just lines up and it just smashes down into there and then it holds. Um, but real world application that doesn't really work. So what we do is we have it, the radius over bent just slightly so that it goes in. We're gonna be down on the sides and then we'll be up in the middle just a little bit. And so then when we press it down, what that does is that causes that radius that's in that, that's in that fret slot to push down and that expands the edges out. So really what happens is you have those little, you have those little teeth that bite in as it goes down, but then as it spreads out, it kind of helps them to lock in place better. And that helps to keep the entire fret down a lot better. So something else you want to do too is when you're doing all this, this cutting and everything on these frets, it can leave all the little bits of fret laying around on your mat and on your workbench and that's bad. You want to go through and get rid of all these little things because then for the next time you have a, a project, your next job, or even this one when you're dragging it across your bench, grab a hold of one of those little bits of metal and it'll just tear right into your finish and ruin everyone's day. All right, so now we're ready to start installing the new frets. We're gonna do this in stages instead of doing the whole fretboard at once because we're gonna glue them in and I'm gonna use my radius block 
to clamp them in in sections at a time and my radius block here is is only is only long enough to do you know about from here to here at a time so what I'm going to do first is I've got this very fine whip tip on my glue here and I'm just going to get that glue right down in the slot I don't want to make a huge mess all over the fretboard but also this is fish glue which is water soluble and it's one of the reasons that I like to use it for this because it is easy to clean up after the fact so there will be some squeeze out there should be some squeeze out but we don't want a huge mess Okay, so we'll take our first fret. Now what we do is we just take and we center it up so that each edge is inside the binding. All right, and now we take our fret hammer with the, the brass end and we gently tap each end So we just want each end to go down and we are so now we're keeping pressure on it and now we just start from the mid kind of doing this on the wrong side I should have should have been left-handed I don't know how to other any other way to do this but anyway what we're going to do now is we start in the center and we work our way out So at this time I have allowed sufficient time for the glue to set up in this first section. So now I'm just going to repeat the process in the next two sections of the fretboard and uh, get the rest of these fronts glued in. And I mean it's just more of the same so we're just going to do this real fast like double time.
now with the frets all installed and glued in, we can come here on the edges and clean that up. And the way we do that, we want these to have a little bit of a bevel on the edges. So we can use one of these files. This is one that I made myself. Um, essentially all it is is just a block with a notch cut out uh, at a, about a 22 and a half degree bevel. And then just take a regular file. You can just slide it in there. And I've got it capped on both ends so it doesn't fall out. And then all you got to do is just run up the sides, keep this flat on the fretboard, and can keep your uh, file on your fret edges. And then what that does is it just works that off so that those uh, these fret ends just get filed off with this consistent angle all along the whole uh, edge of the fretboard. Yeah, so this is just one of those parts of this job that it just, it's tedious, it just takes a lot of time, it's very repetitive. There's really not a whole lot to talk about here other than just, you just keep filing. And kind of really this job from here on out is just a lot of more of this. Um, whether it's filing or sanding or polishing the frets, uh, you know, it's not real glamorous, uh, not a whole lot to talk about pretty straightforward and you just kind of just keep your head down and do the job and get it done so like this this process for example actually takes a lot longer than what I'm actually showing in this video but but it's the basic idea and so now to finish up the job I need to do a basic fret dress so that's going to include uh, leveling the frets, polishing them, and uh, dressing them, dressing the ends. So I start out right here by taping off the fretboard to protect it during the process. And then once the fretboard is masked off, then I mark the tops of every fret with this blue marker. And that way when I go to level them, uh, I know that uh, the tops of every single one of them has been hit and they're even and they're all going to be perfectly level with each other. And this step is crucial so that you don't have fret buzz all over the neck. So here I'm using my leveling beam to level the tops of all the frets. Um, there's an adhesive backed uh, piece of sandpaper that's attached to the face of this beam and it spans the entire length of the fretboard. It's long enough. I like using it for that uh, because I'm able to get the entire fretboard um, with every single stroke and that's really important uh, to me for for this process, for this part of the process because uh, then I know that I'm getting the entire fretboard and the whole thing is level. And you can use shorter beams in places where you maybe don't need to get the whole fretboard. In fact, maybe where you don't want to get the whole fretboard, say to create some fall away or just some spot leveling. But especially for a fresh uh, fret dress like this, I really like to get the entire board. So with the frets all leveled, now we have a situation where the tops of all the frets are now uh, flat. Um, they need to have a crown to them um, because your string needs to hit right in the center of the top of the fret. But if they're flat, it's going to be hitting a little bit off center and that's going to affect intonation. You're not going to be able to play in tune. And as well as having a wider surface, you're more likely to have some string buzz as well. So you want a really narrow, fine point on the top. So that's what I'm doing now, is I'm using this uh, Z file from Stumac. Um, I've been using this one for the last uh, about year or two, and I really, really like using this tool. It's very effective, makes the job really efficient, um, and it's easy to use. But I'm reintroducing that crown back into the top of the fret. That's what it looks like when it comes in the package, and that's what it looks like with every guitar that's hanging on a wall in a guitar store. Um, they all have nice rounded frets, but they've all been flattened before they got there. And so that's what I'm doing now is I have flattened them and now I'm putting that round top surface back into it. Now you see there's the blue lines once again and that's because I redrew blue lines now on the flat tops and now I am 
uh, filing the the crown back into it, um, and I'm I'm filing it so that all that's left is just a little bit of a blue line left right down the center of the top of the fret, and that's how I know that I've reintroduced crown all the way back into the the top of the fret, leaving only just a very very fine line on the very top, so I don't actually take any. Um, height off of the fret and undo any of the leveling work that I've already done. Now I'm using this very small, delicate file. It's a fret end dressing file um, to to dress or soften the edge, the ends of the frets. Uh, that's right where your hand is going to be rubbing against them as you work your hand up and down the neck of the guitar. And so, um, so it's important to, to soften these edges and really round them over and make them nice and comfortable so they're not sticking out, so they're not sharp. Because uh, right now, the fret ends are sharp after doing all of that filing, the beveling, the leveling, and the recrowning. Uh, they're they're pretty sharp, and this guitar would not be comfortable to play on right now. So this process uh, really makes the guitar a lot more comfortable to play. Now comes the polishing process. Uh, after all of the fret leveling, uh, filing, recrowning, uh, it leaves a lot of tool marks in the frets. So that all needs to be cleaned up and polished out because uh, if you want to have a nice, comfortable playing experience on this guitar, um, then that all has to be cleaned up. You can actually feel um, when this part of a, of, a, of a fret job has not been done well, especially on lower end guitars. Um, it's one of the steps that they kind of uh, skimp through a little bit. And the way that you can tell that they didn't spend a lot of time on this is because when you play, especially if you do something like bending the strings, you can feel like little notches um, in the fret that your string actually gets caught in as you push the string up and down the fret. Um, is very noticeable. It's really uncomfortable to play that way. And so you want to have a really nice, smooth playing experience. And this is the way you get that, is by having a good fret job. So we start out with, uh, with sanding them down with progressively higher you know, grits of sandpaper. And then we move on to micro mesh. And then the polishing wheel, which I just started using, I'll talk about that in a minute. So I've been going to one of our other Palin Music stores, um, the the main one in Springfield, Missouri, uh, helping out with some guitar repairs there. And that's where they also have our main brass and woodwind instrument repair shop. Now they use these little uh, polishing wheels for the brass and silver instruments and our guitar tech Danny there was also using them to polish frets on guitars and so uh, he hooked me up with a supply of them I came back and I've been using them and I gotta say it's kind of a game changer I really love these little polishing discs that they're using for the uh, for the brass instruments uh, I'm not exactly sure what they are or where they're from, um, but I'm going to fi find out, and uh, as soon as I do, I'll put a link down in the description. I, I really like working with these. I know there are others um, that uh, Stu Mac has some, but I feel like these are just really good at getting the frets really shiny and sparkling without really, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of danger of uh, eating into the fret that much. So you're not going to really do much damage, but you're going to really shine them up. And f personally, they're able to, to make the best finish fret jobs that, uh, that I've ever been able to accomplish. 
just something to make mention of real quick here as we finish this up. Um, of course, I did do a full setup at the end of this, and also that includes carving a new nut uh, because the old nut would no longer work because the frets were so low that the nut slots had been filed down so low there was hardly any nut left on this so it needed a new nut so even though there's still a lot of stuff like that that uh, is not seen in this video it's still part of a job like this <laughs> Well, this thing's all done. We got it all strung up, put a new nut on it to accommodate for the higher frets. Everything is feeling and playing great. It sounds great. Really happy with the way this one has turned out. But that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you then.